this is an example to show how we can create a new surface with uh, the tools that are in Rock Science's 3D software. If we have a water surface that looks something like this, that would actually act as ponded water if we applied this current surface as the water table in slide three or RS3. What we want to do in this demonstration is trim or clip this initial surface to the external to create a new surface, uh, then transform it below our external and then smooth it as well. So we don't end up with this zigzag shape applied as our water table. So this is looking at the scenario in section view. The two pieces of geometry I have to start with is an external volume that's representative of the pit shell and a water surface that has not yet been trimmed to the pit shell. Initially, I'm going to select the external volume and set it as the external. And then I'm just going to divide all Once the surface has been divided into the model, you can see that three volumes have been created. One that's primarily above where the water table was sitting before. One below where the water surface was and a small volume that was created at the intersection of the water table and when it's penetrated through one of the, uh, the crests. Now what we wanna do is create a new surface of the interface between the water table and the existing face below the water table or the water surface. So what I'm going to do is move to entity selection and I'm going to select the volume of material that was sitting above where my previous water table was and hide it. Now I'm going to go to face selection and I'm going to select all the faces that are sitting below the water table and in the pit. If I zoom in, I can see that some faces haven't been selected. So I'm going to uh, go shift, left mouse click, and this acts as a, a bit of a smart select to select the remaining faces. I'm now going to go to geometry, surface triangulation tools, create from selected faces. And you can see that these two new surfaces have been created. One of them is the larger area that I'm interested in and this smaller one of uh, the face was sitting slightly above uh, or at the crest of the pit. So this is the one that I want to now utilize as the new water table. Like any new piece of geometry that's created in the software, before I apply it to the model, I want to repair it. I'm going to set its role to geology and go geometry, repair, repair. So it's got a few near degenerate features, holes and near folding faces. If I go repair, it's fixed these issues for me. I can now assign this as a water table. So I can select this uh, surface and go groundwater, add water surface. Okay, apply it to all the materials in the model. I turn the rest of these, uh, my external volumes on. You can see here, this surface has been created as I wanted that's been clipped to the external. Ideally, I want to drop this now a certain distance below uh, the pit shell. I don't want it to be fully saturated at the face. And I also want to smooth the boundary. The water table shouldn't really have a rigid face that's been created though from the process I just completed. So I'm going to remove the water table, but taking this surface I've created, I'm going to go and select geometry, transform, translate, and I'm going to drop it 20 meters below its current position and go OK. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply a smoothing tool that's in the software to remove that zigzag shape. So I'm going to select from the developer menu, this function called Laplacian smoothing. Okay. I'm going to say I want it as these smoothing parameters. And now if I look at this in section view, 
you can see here that this is the initial surface that was created. And by smoothing it, I've got something that's probably going to be more acceptable as a water table in the model than something that's zigzagged. We can go close. I'm going to set this other surface that I've created as construction because I want to use the smooth surface. And then I'm going to go to groundwater, add water surface. Okay. And then if I turn my external pieces of geometry back on and look in section view again, you can see the water table that's uh, now been created and applied. There's a little bit of water ponding, uh, indicative water ponding at the toe. So I can go back, remove the water table, drop this down further. So I don't get that scenario modeled at the toe. Just to demonstrate this, I'll deselect. I'll do geometry. And I will drop it by 10 meters. I'll reassign that as the groundwater surface. And now it's completely below my pit shell. So I won't get water ponding in the model. So this is just an example of how we can use some of the CAD tools within Rock Science's 3D software to generate water surfaces uh, that may currently extend above the pit shell.